this, you know how we did the contendership boxes last week. Another another contendership box, I think, though maybe not as well defined, is win a game that you have no business winning. Okay, and that was one of them. Yeah. So they fall behind twenty eight to nine. Obviously, busy sports day. Whether you're watching the women's final later on, the Rangers. We had WrestleMania. The Stars play late, late in the evening. And this, there was a lot happening yesterday. But in the first quarter. The Mavericks had eight turnovers. Four of them were from Luka. You fell in a gigantic hole. I think the deficit eventually got to 22 points. You had no business winning this game. Seventh biggest comeback in franchise history. I think that's another check on the contendership box. And obviously, you've seen a bunch of pictures of Luka. I just can't look at you and take you seriously. <laughs> a bunch of pictures of Luka and Kyrie embracing. And it felt like, I might be reading way too much into this, but it felt like a... We can f and do this embrace. Uh, I, I look. They looked really tired to me. They did look very tired. Like they, like they gave it their all. I mean, it was awesome, right? For those two guys and the whole team. I'm not the whole team to not give maybe their best effort, especially in the first quarter, but to give everything they had in that fourth quarter and overtime to get a necessary victory to kind of stay in that five, six situation. The, it was the, it was after the game, Kyrie did say, I, I am physically done. Yeah. I, I've, I've spent everything. I left everything I could out there today on that, on the court. And that's true. You could see it, man. Um, I don't love the, Oh man, this, we won this game and, and we celebrated it like it was the championship. And I didn't feel like that wasn't necessary. The celebration they had yesterday. I felt you like thought this, it was unnecessary. No, I, th I felt it was right. Okay. Like that's, that was the right type of celebration for that moment, that game in front of your crowd, the way you did it over time. And then like, it was a scratch and claw the entire game just to stay in it and to believe that you were still in it and to believe that you still had the ability to beat that team that went up on you very early and they weren't giving up easy. Like, there's no way like they did lose Thompson and that, that stunk for them. They lost Thompson because he tried to knock a uh, Kleba's head off. But that was one of those moments where you watched the team and you felt like everything that they did was they were battling for each other in that moment. Reggie, I'm hoping you can give us some insight uh -huh. into just how you were feeling or what the crowd was like in the building toward the end of the first quarter versus at the end of regulation. Because I know they won it over time, but the end of regulation was just seemed bananas. Yeah, it was actually very unique because I was in the arena and I was sitting next to Nick Angstat and Tim Cato, both guys who cover this team, a lot. And during the course of that first quarter, Cato turned to the both of us and asked, do the Mavericks win this game? And I'm not ashamed to say no. Like, I, 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 that's, sure. that was my response. I was like, look, the way that this thing is going, and Tim said that they would. And I think it was a, an understanding of the ways in which this team, like, mentally has changed. This is, it's shifted, right? We've seen games where they have let go of the rope, so to say, where, or where they have, like, lost belief, whether it was just in small portions of not making shots and you saw them lose belief or, call, you know, calls not going the right way and them losing belief. You had both of those things happen in this game, and this team stayed in and fought, and you started to see some of those vibes uh, build over the course of the game in the arena with certain moments like Kyrie, um, you know, making good decisions or stopping and popping for a three in transition or an alley-oop to Dante X. And, like, there were some moments where you started to see that belief also build in the arena, but it was evident that that belief existed down on that bench pretty much the whole time. Follow well, obviously, with the amazing call. Watching it happen, was it as hysterical in the building when Exum made the three as it looked on television. And do you want to, just real quick before you answer that, do you want to play it one more time? If we can get cut number four, just so you can get a vibe of it before Reggie gives us the in-person breakdown. Of it. Three will tie it and hand off to Luca. Back to Exum. Got it. Oh, it. Oh, I'm telling you, I... I love Falwell. I love that call, but I really love Derek Carver. Go, got it. Yeah, I'm so glad too that they came out with quick energy in the overtime. Because sometimes I don't know. We've seen this. I feel like in basketball, sometimes that shot, sometimes it does spur you on to then win the overtime. But sometimes it's such an emotional shot 
that you have nothing left to give in yeah. overtime. And I thought the Mavs did a great job. And I don't know. I think these situations, too, I'm going to go in another direction. I think these situations, too, Luka gave the ball up, if I have the play right, with like, I don't know, 30 seconds to go to Kleba for a wide open three, and he missed it. But P.J. Washington hitting the threes in the corner in overtime and Exum hitting the three to, like, I think this is confidence. It's giving Luka confidence. I can pass the ball in yes. this situation. Yes. Okay, and I can. I don't have to be the guy in the fourth quarter that has the ball as Kyrie was the guy again yeah. in the fourth quarter. All right, I want to talk about something there then because I know we are talking about yesterday's game. But if we can fire off cut number 22, go back to Friday. I, I, Kyrie has the ball. He dishes it to Hardaway, who sees the play with P.J. Washington, and that's how they win that game. And the Mavericks want to go to Kyrie Irving, and it goes into him. Here comes the double team. Kyrie moves away from it. Hardaway, seven seconds, driving. Washington underneath. Lays it in. Lays it in. The way to attack. I this is a team. Yeah, and I wasn't sure if we would be able to work that in, but that speaks to both of y'all's points about whether it's Luca or Kyrie. Those are your dudes, but they know I can dish it to Hardaway, who then sees the open spot to Washington. I was or Exum yesterday. I was listening, Corey, to uh, the fan here during the weekend, and uh, they were asking this or that. They were playing that game, and they were saying Luca or Kyrie, like this or that kind of fourth quarter to win the game and I thought they both had the wrong answer it's both I know that you're having to pick this or that it was a great segment but I'm just saying who cares yeah. we have two we have two of the top I'm gonna say 10 two of the top 10 closers in basketball I can agree and there's with that. not a wrong answer my answer would be if there's less than seven seconds it has to go to Kyrie because Luca it takes him too long to kind of get what he wants in those, hey, there's six seconds left, out of bounds, figure it out, Luca. That's not enough time for him to figure it out. But I just think that now teams have to go, oh, crap, they're going to want to be winning at the end of a playoff game. But this has to be the biggest, oh, crap, team to face with 10 seconds to go with the game on the line and the, and the Mavericks have the ball. Yeah, You're going you're gonna to try your best, just like Houston did. They forced the ball out of Luca's hands. Luca made a pass to Exum, who they said, look, we're gonna if, if Exum makes it, we go to overtime. We're not going to let Luke, and we're going to try to not let Kyrie take this shot. Uh, so I just think that during the weekend, the this or that that uh, they played, I was like, it's both. This is the great – for the first time in a long time, probably since Dirk and Nash, you have a this and that that you're like, I don't care. Both of them work. And they're, and they're both smart enough to know who needs the shot. Like they're both – I think that's the other thing. For a long time, it always felt like Nash and, and Dirk, there was a struggle to figure out which one was going to get it. And both of these guys seem to know that they can be the guy. But, Kevin, that's something that I'm looking further down the road at. Sure. Further down the road, sure. th this is something you hang your hat on. We know we can win tough games. We know we're never out of a game. Jason Kidd, in that run to his championship with this Mavs team, how many times were they down 15 and they were like, we're going to make some stops here. We'll be back in the game, and we'll go ahead and win this game. So he knows what that takes, and this team is seeing it and starting to believe that they're never out of it. I know you still had overtime to go to, but just to go back to you for a minute, Reggie. What was your reaction when Exum hit the three, and what was what was the atmosphere like in that building at that moment? Well, no, the atmosphere was insane. There was... I mean, and this is, uh, as WrestleMania just happened, this is a little bit of that wrestle. Uh, man, there was like multiple times during the game where the pop in the arena yeah. was huge. And that was probably the, the biggest one, if not the second biggest one. Um, and I mean, yeah, I, in that moment, it was kind of amazement because I had watched people started filing out once uh, the Rockets got the ball back and then they got fouled and they put Jabari Smith online because you look around and you go, okay, the, he makes at least one, and this is probably not going to continue. And, I, I mean, you could see the people decide that, man, and it wasn't everybody, obviously, but there was people filing out. And then they go and they knock down the shot, and it's like, man, this team just refuses to die in some ways, right? Like, And I, I think it goes back to what Corey was talking about. There's a belief that it does not matter whatever game they are in, and we've seen it multiple times in the last few weeks. They believe that they still have a capability of winning. That's a huge, huge thing to have in their DNA going into the uh, postseason. Yeah, that, 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 that part of, that's what you want your team 
to have that zombie like mentality where sure. we're going to we're, we're going to you don't want them to always start off games the way they did yesterday. We want to get rid of that as quickly as Agreed. we possibly can. But in those moments where it's trying, they're battle tested. They know they they, they know they can do it.